Hi, my name is Tommy. I own a Tesla. I've been wanting to make a channel for a while to talk about my car, but I've also had an issue finding out what to talk about. Everybody tends to have already answered all the questions that I've had. And the ones that I've had... Oh, wow, sorry, my car just freaked out. Again, that's why I'm making this video. I've been trying my hard time figuring out where to start my Tesla journey with you guys, despite the fact I've now owned it for over eight months. I've actually driven it to both coasts, and yes, I do have a standard range plus. And I drove to the East Coast with two kids under the age of four and my wife over three days with 26 total charging stops. But the reason I'm making this one is charging. Charging has never really been an issue until recently. When I first got the car, I had a friend who's a master electrician. I've been told it's not a real title. He affirms me that it is. I uh, come in and install a NEMA 1450 outlet and I've had zero issues. Until recently, I noticed it's been stopping charging, stopped charging every about 40 minutes or so, usually after about five to 6% power. And it wasn't until tonight that I actually got a notification on why. Apparently, most homes are wired to not, well, long story short, we all default charge at 32 amps. I learned that's a little too hot for most home chargers, especially when you're just using a 1450 outlet and it depends on the breaker box that you have. So in my case, it's been shutting off after about 40 minutes after 6% charge. That's because I've been defaulting at 32 amp. I'm going to try doing it at 20 amp and see what happens. Let's see if my car sets on fire, my house burns down, whatever. I'm a little nervous. Let's find out. And here's a notification I'm talking about. As you can see, it's a code UMC underscore A017. And it says the charge rate is reduced because the wall plug temperature is too high. If we actually click on it, you'll see it's talking about that it's usually not an issue with the car or the actual mobile connector itself, but with the outlet in the wall. My outlet is actually pretty brand new. It's less than five or six months old at this point. However, I noticed that of some of the things I've read said that if the outlet is not completely plugged in, that can be an issue too, which I have a habit of that happening where it comes unplugged slightly because I mishung the little box that holds my wall, my mobile unit charger. So I just took it off the wall and let it hang. Most people tend to do this, so I wasn't too terribly concerned. I think the issue with me is we are doing it at 32 amp and that is too high. So I'm gonna try that out for a couple days and see what happens, but if not, I'll try to do another mobile like Tesla service call. But the last couple I've tried to do, we ended up canceling ahead of time because they're able to do it over the air and they've determined the issues I was having wasn't an issue. Of course, last issues I've talked about was my battery and how I've lost almost, you know, I think it's close to 20 miles in range now and I only had the car for eight months. And they told me it could be because of some of my charging habits. So I've been doing what they said, but I've still had the loss in the range. So we'll have to figure that out, but that's a whole other video. But now let's see if we can figure out this whole charging issue. All right, let's get switched back to the Nemo. I'll unplug that, there we go. Okay, outlet plugged into the wall again. It is charging with all green, showing the power is flowing, so it should not be the mobile connector itself. We have it set to 22 amps, so let's see what happens. So I'm just sitting here thinking about it. I've had this issue now for a few weeks, and I'm surprised it never really occurred to me that it was an issue. And yes, that is a Ninja Turtles poster over my head. I'm an adult. I think the reason that I never noticed it before is because I always had scheduled charging, so I was always set to leave the house by 6 a.m. So every time it shut itself off, it would turn itself on again because it has to charge by 6 a.m. so I can get to, to and from work. So I never noticed it stopping, except I noticed when I would come home and I just needed a charger for a few minutes before I head somewhere else, it would always cut off because it was scheduled charge. I didn't start noticing it until I turned off the scheduled charging and saw that my car just stopped charging itself. So let's see if this fixes it. Well, it stopped again. I think did a little more research and found out this is actually a fairly common problem. And what it is, the car thinks the outlet is overheating. I found a lot of people are having the same issue and no one's really had a good workaround yet. The closest thing I found was people suggest turning down the amp rate again. So I turned my amps down from 31 all the way down to 20. It's still stopping after about 6% charge or 40 minutes. <sighs> this is starting to get a little annoying. Next thing I'm gonna do is try to change out the outlet to see if that fixes it. I mean, what's the point of having a NEMA 1450 at home if you can't charge consistently with it? But I did notice these issues didn't stop till after I started doing scheduled charging. And since then, it's been messing up. Well, let's uh, see what happens. 
So, like I said, it stopped charging again after about 6% and about 30 minutes. So it doesn't give me notifications to my phone, which I also still find weird because I have notifications turned on if charging stops, charging starts. It never actually notifies me when it does. But if we look here, I'm gonna go into service mode, notifications, and earlier today, driving. So it doesn't actually give me the warning now. It just stops charging. And all it tells me is my uh, like you know autopilot features were limited, which makes sense. We had a massive torrential downpour, which I'll get to that in a second. That caused some other damage with me last night. So I'm not getting the warning why it stops charging. It just stops charging. Oh, this is frustrating. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is actually charge using just the regular wall outlet and see if that does if it stops charging with that as well. All right, I'm gonna try one more thing here because I'm one of those crazy people. When I got the car, I bought a second charger to keep in the car just in case. Let's see if my other charger works any better. Ugh. New charger, same result. I think I'm gonna do a reset on the car and see what happens. Okay, I just did a reset. If you don't know, you do that by holding down both of the directional buttons down for about 10 seconds. Now we're just waiting for the car to reset. It's alive. Now let's see what happens as far as the charging goes when it kicks back on. All right, I have it plugged into a 120 volt outlet instead of my NEMA 1450. I'm just gonna let this go tonight and we'll see what happens. Hi, it's me again. It took about uh, 24 hours of actually really, really, really looking into it, but I finally figured out why my car kept stop, the well, charge kept stopping. <sighs> the age old saying, the simplest explanation tends to be the correct one. It truly bolds well here. So the issue we had is, let's do a little recap. Every time I tried to charge my car with my NEMA 1450 outlet, it would stop charging after about five to 6% or about 40 minutes. Could not figure out why turned off scheduled departure, I turned off the uh, scheduled timing, or charging timing, scheduled timing. Um, I even tried a different charger because I do have two of them. I even tried doing it in a wall outlet. That didn't work either. They all, every time I tried, the charging would stop every time. I was so frustrated last night to the point I actually emailed a friend of mine who works at a car dealership and said, what can you offer me for my car as far as trade-in values? I'm looking to get out of this because if something this simple can prevent me from being able to drive my car, I don't know if I want it. Well, this morning, I woke up to a full charge. So like, what is going on? So, I looked at my app, everything, you know, everything was still turned off, everything was turned on that was supposed to be turned on. I went to another app that I have that I downloaded after the recommendation of a friend, seeing it on several Tesla vlogs. I even talked to someone at Tesla at one point and brought it up to them. They said, oh, that's a great app for monitoring your kilowatt usage, your miles, and everything else. But there was a feature in that app that I was not aware of. And I'm not gonna name the app because the app's actually a good app. I just didn't know I had this feature in setting that caused all my problems. So I deleted it and that fixed all my issues. Um, turned out this separate app, since it, accessed, it requests access to your Tesla app and to your Tesla, it also has the departure charging and the scheduled time charging on it. So even though I turned it off in all the applicable places on my phone and on the car, this app was still doing the scheduled charging. So I turned it off and tried it. Lo and behold, I was able to charge an additional 15% with no stoppage, no issues, the full amp rate, the whole nine. So in my case, I was extremely lucky that it was simply just a switch I had to turn off in a third party app. I have since removed that third party app to avoid any of these issues going forward because I was driven to the brink of madness. So take time, walk away, take a deep breath. The simplest explanation tends to be the correct one. It's just in my case, I had no idea to look there and everyone I talked to had no idea to look there either, which is why I'm really glad this is my first video on the channel. Because like I said, I didn't know what to say that other people hadn't already said. Well, it turns out I couldn't really find a lot of people that was having the same issue. They were having similar issues where their cars were charging was stopped and it usually turned out to be a bad outlet, which in my case, I didn't think there was any way that could be the issue considering the outlet is less than six months old. So it turns out, yep, it was just a setting. You know, it's like working on your phone, your laptop, any other piece of technology. 
it's sometimes always the setting. Don't ever blame the hardware. We're so used to getting under the hood of a car, ripping out the broken part, putting in the new one. In this day and age, you really do have to be a modern era mechanic. It's no longer getting under the hood and ripping stuff out to diagnose. Really now it's just troubleshooting. The same thing that IT specialists do. Start off with the easiest solution and work to the hardest one, because chances are it is that easiest one. So we're, this kind of confirms to me too, we're no longer in the day of the age old, let me get my mechanic to get underneath the hood or get underneath the car. It's all right, let me look at my notifications and what error code am I getting? I do have to go back and look to see why I was getting that overheating error code there for a little while, because I did get that several times, but I didn't get that at all the last 48 hours, specifically the last 24 hours when I really looked into fixing this. But hey, we got the problem fixed, car's running great, I really appreciate everyone taking the time to check out this first video on my channel, Tommy's Tesla Tech and Travel. Uh, there's going to be a lot more videos coming out soon from our past vacations and trips across the country from here in Arizona to Florida to go to Walt Disney World, and then from here to Di California to go to Disneyland. I got two kids. We do a lot of Disney travels. But there's going to be some other travels coming up too and some other fun spots, and I can't wait to start talking to you guys about other stuff too, like my additional love for tech, other things I'm doing with my car and what's happening with my car. Uh, if you care, awesome, thanks. Hit the like button, subscribe, it's free, why not? If you hate it, cool, there's about a million other things to watch on YouTube. I'm glad I was just one of your stops. You guys have a great day and thank you for watching.